Hi, I'm Danny and welcome back to my channel. In this episode, I will cover the disadvantages of retiring in the Philippines. However, do not fail to see the other video that I prepared and it talks about the advantages which in my opinion far outweighs the disadvantages. I just want to present this video so that you are not blindsided and you will know what to anticipate. So here comes. Buying a car in the Philippines is more expensive. For example, a four-cylinder Toyota Fortuner, a four-wheel drive and seven-seater SUV could cost you about $44,000. Of course, you can buy cheaper ones, but this is just for comparison purposes. Although this is a one-time cost, the cost of gas is also expensive, almost twice that of the United States. But being retired, the impact may not be as significant as you would think, since we will not be traveling that much. We will not be going back and forth to work every single day. Also, diesel is less expensive than regular gas in the Philippines, unlike in the United States, which is the other way around. So we'll probably opt for a car that uses diesel. Electric is double the price as in the US on per kilowatt hour basis. However, since we're downsizing from a 2,800 uh, square foot house to 800 square foot condo, and since there is no heating required, which accounts for about 60% of our electric cost in the United States, it is likely to be a non-event. This too reminds, uh, remains to be seen and I will keep you updated on this. I understand that water and sewer is expensive. I can't assess this uh, to be honest uh, right now because our water and sewer is included as part of our association dues of $310 per month. However, since I consider the difference between a $100 condo fee and a $310 uh, association do in in the United States I would say that the uh, the uh, cost of water and sewer will be a hit to our budget on a dollar for dollar basis again I'll keep you updated on this as we spend more time in the Philippines in general it's cheaper to just eat out in the Philippines than cook at home however why do I consider this a disadvantage well most food in the Philippines contains MSG, which is not healthy. This could be a real problem, especially if you are sensitive to MSG like my wife, which means that you will still have to do some cooking at home, or most, most of the time. Otherwise, you may consider this as an advantage. Anything imported, such as uh, electronics, uh, are more expensive in the Philippines. You, must have to, you, you will just have to buy them overseas, and bring them back to the Philippines. Internet access is very weak compared to that of the US, but they are available. I understand that this is now being improved. I still need to see how much improvement will be experienced here and how quickly this improvement will be put in place. Phone calls are very expensive too compared to the US. This is why most people use texting to communicate. They also have uh, three or more networks available in the Philippines uh, such as uh, uh, Sun, Globe, and something else. Uh, and it, it tends to complicate uh, making calls in the Philippines. But I guess it's just a matter of getting used to it. Now, this one last one is a big one. Traffic and congestion in the city of Manila is severe. There's even so-called coding when you're not allowed to drive your car for one day a week, depending on the last digit of your plate number. However, during coding days, there is a window, for example, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. when you will be allowed to drive. Uh, they're just trying to, uh, I guess, reduce the traffic during the heavy uh, office hours when people are working. And I guess we just have to learn uh, the best time to leave and the best time to come home uh, during these uh, busy hours. Uh, after all, we're retired and we're not against the clock all the time. 
although we can work around this problem this is a drawback since I it's something that I have to think about every time I need to commute and I believe this is only in the city of Manila and not in the provinces. So there you have it. Hopefully, you were able to uh, get some good information, some good idea about the situation in Manila. I will continue to post additional episodes uh, that will more specifically address the other specific areas of concern such as medical insurance, transferring funds, buying a condominium, telephone communication, and how to handle the move. If you like this video, please, please click like and share and subscribe. This will help me a lot and encourage me to bring more information to you as I go through this retirement process. Thank you for tuning in and make it a great day.